<laughs> so we had to stop in the middle of the episode uh, because my baby needed some attention. So he is being fed by his sister right now. It's a little yogurt belt, so hopefully that will keep him happy. And we're going to get back to our painting. So we have like a triangle in the middle here. And we are putting on, I don't know if you need to move closer, on use our camera woman in order to be able to Hi. see uh, lots and lots of thick white on there. So once we've gotten our white on there, we're going to add a little teeny bit of yellow. And some people are like, you have to use this exact yellow. Uh, whatever yellow you happen to have in the house, if you do already do art, is good. Um, this color, I think, is about out. We only need a teeny bit, so I think I'll be okay I'm just kind of cleaning it out. This is an artist loft, a deep Daddy, yellow. And so I just need a little bit of it because it's super, super, super bright. And we're going to make a super, super, super light yellow, with mixing it with the white. I'll close that up in case we need that last little tidbit. And we're going to go around the edges of our light and add just a little teeny bit. This white's going to help make the white, the yellow is going to help make the white glow. And there's also some, if you look around, there's some here in the trees too. So we're going to add a little bit in the trees over here and over here and then down in here too and over here on the side. So just a little bit here and there just to, just to kind of bring the painting together. As you blend colors in to different areas of the painting, then it brings the colors together. I did one painting where I had a forest and I had a wolf in the forest. I did the wolf and the forest out of the exact same colors. So when you look at the painting from far away, it looks like just a forest. When you get closer, all of a sudden there's a wolf right in the middle staring at you. So that was kind of fun to do. Alrighty, and then after we've added a little bit of yellow, we're going to add a teeny tiny bit of gray. And we're going to make that gray by mixing a little bit of black with it. And I took a picture of all the art supplies and when I get a chance, I will put them down in the comments. But until then, um, just use whatever black you have on hand. Um, this is a satin finish and it's an acrylic. I like glossy, so I like to have bright and um, but also matte if you don't want a lot of light reflecting off of it. And it would be easier to take pictures of your artwork. Matte paint is a good way to go. All right, so we have a little teeny bit of gray in our white. And we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of shadows around the edges of our light. See how it makes it start to pop out of the out of the middle of the painting to have that gray around the edges. Okay. And if you can see, there's a little bit of gray all over in the painting, so we're going to go ahead and pull some more in. I didn't make very much gray, so I'm going to have to make a little more. You hear some sounds in the background. That's my husband. He, um works for a company called Intuitive AB, and he is updating our house right now. So this is kind of our Saturday get projects done, and I'm excited to see uh, the, the things he's gonna fix in our house. We bought a house that had been foreclosed on, and it needs a lot of help. And there's these switches, and we, they don't turn any lights on, so he's gonna fix that and make things work. So we're excited to have that happen. All right, so we've got a little bit of gray in there, and then we get a gray, green and a yellow green. So which is lighter, Anya? The gray green or the yellow green? Yellow green. That's right. So we're going to go ahead and clean that gray out of our brush. Whenever you switch a color, you clean your brush out. And if you can zoom in on my water tub a little bit. So I try to get my clean water for mixing colors from here and my dirty water where I'm cleaning my brush out on the other side. Grab a paint tub using two cups works too. So we're going to go ahead and pull some of that yellow, but we need some green first to pull it with. And this is kind of like about olive green. If you want it to be more of an exciting picture, not so um, kind of muted, you can go with more of a blue green instead of an olive green or a, uh, this, what is this one called? Uh, this one is called shamrock. So you're just making a little teeny bit and we don't need our yellow for anything else. So I can just go ahead and pull all that yellow in and make that light. And we're gonna go ahead and dab that in there. Okay, that looks mostly like yellow. And we're going to go up around the sides of your canvas. If you want to hang this on the wall without having to pay for a frame or something, you definitely want to go with a wrapped around canvas. Panels are great if you're going to be putting in a frame, but um, they can get damaged easily on the corners and they don't protect your painting as well. So I'm not a big fan of panels. I loved panels when I was in school, but then when I try to frame my artwork, they wanted me to put it in mats and glass and it got really expensive. 
So I enjoy doing it this way. Okay, so this is the brush I'm using. It's a fat brush, but I've trimmed it down to a point and it makes great leaves. So you can use a round brush, you can use a flat brush. A flat brush, you can use it wide line or you can use it as a thin line for your thin line detail stuff. Okay, so we got some yellow in there with some green. Now we're gonna just keep adding a little more green and some white to that to get our light greens in here. And then we're gonna pull our gray greens in a minute. So we're gonna go ahead and pull that in. And we got a branch coming through across where the beam of light is coming. So we're gonna go ahead and stick some of that in there. And because my white was not dry yet, I just pulled some more white into my brush. So I've gotta kinda of clean that out a little bit in order to get my green. And you wanna think that if you have a glow in the middle where the first vision is happening, the leaves are gonna get darker as you go out. And you don't wanna make it, you don't want to make it systematically darker because this is kind of a foresty. You wanna make it interestingly darker. So you just, you have a little bit of variety in here. And then you want some shadows and some highlights down here in the, the bottom of the forest green. Ring. So what you do is you just enjoy painting, just like you're not trying to say, oh, it doesn't look like hers, or I don't like the way mine turned out. You're just enjoying the process of putting paint on the paper. Acrylics, you can let them dry, you can paint over it, you can make a completely different painting on the same canvas the next day. So you don't have to keep it that way. So we're just gonna go slowly adding more green to our brush and to our color and get darker around the edges to kind of pull this in. That's right, I'm your mommy. Yeah. All right. Sylvia is feeding Junior today. She is helping out. We're very grateful for her and for Anya holding the camera because it gets tiring holding the camera. Alrighty. So we've got some green in there. And then we're going to go ahead and do some gray green. So you mix the black with the white. And I pull some green in. And then we're gonna put that in there. See how darker that is and kind of muted? You want to have bright colors and you want to have muted ones. And they kind of help each other stand out. We're gonna to try to go through here again. See if it's, if you load up the brush, you can get through the, the white part without Mommy, losing your Junior, color. Junior's, Junior's gonna eat it, but it He's not happy anymore? Don't keep stuffing him in his face if he doesn't want him. Do you want, do you want to take him in the other room? So we're gonna go ahead and make this a lot darker and bring in some more grays and Actually, make the shadows on the ground. Nah, I'm gonna skip them one more. No. Okay. And then we're gonna go ahead and pull in some more on the sides. Yeah, and just be thinking and looking at the painting. Some people like to look at a picture when they're doing their artwork and then they keep looking at the picture and they're not looking at their painting. And so they don't see where their painting is maybe already done. So it's important to look at your painting and be like, oh, this looks good or this needs work. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that in some more. And I feel like this top part is way too light and the bottom's way too light. So let's get some nice dark green in there. I need some more green. All right, we got some percussion going on. Okay, a little bit more black. Now we're gonna mix some. Sylvie, are you willing to look through my art and see if you can, my um, paints, and look and see if you can find another green in there for me? Um, this green's just not dark enough. Okay, after I get that. Thank you. So I've taught this class twice. We did it for a um, art class, because now my kids are homeschooling, like most of you all. And, um, I also did it for my Relief Society. Right before they started the quarantine for the church, my Relief Society had an activity on um, the same night as we had the activities for boys and girls, and I taught it to my class. So um, I'll ask them for permission to go ahead and post a picture of them. Uh, they all held up their artwork, and we got to see them. It was really neat because you could see everyone's different style in their artwork. And I think that's really neat how you don't realize the beautiful things that your artwork can say about you. Yeah. Yeah, you like mama painting? Mm-hmm. Okay. 
Okay, let's get some really dark spots in here now. Some nice big shadows. We're gonna pull in the black. Do not be afraid of black. It will dry and you can always paint over it. Okay, but it makes the white really stand out if you pull in some blacks into your artwork. Alrighty. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and do our tree trunks. We're gonna use a thinner brush. If you make a mistake and you don't like the way your tree trunk is, you can just put white on one side or another to kind of make the tree trunk not be too straight or something like that. If you've ever been to the Sacred Grove while you're painting, you could play the music from um, uh, the song, Oh How Lovely Was the Morning about Joe Smith's first vision. Or you can try to remember the time when you went to the Sacred Grove. I went to the Sacred Grove right after my mission. I went on my mission to Montreal, Canada, French speaking. Bonjour. And uh, at the end of my mission, my parents took me on a tour and we went across the border, went border hopping into New York. We crossed legally, <laughs> went through the border station. And what happened there? Uh, we went down into New York and we went to Palmyra and the church history site, so we went to the Sacred Grove. And it was a really neat experience. We took a newspaper, we went out in the woods, and kneel down in the newspaper, and I got a chance to pray and just offer up to Heavenly Father about my mission and um, my experience and say, this was for you, and thank you for letting me go on a mission, and was it acceptable before you? And I felt like it was, that Heavenly Father had blessed me to go on a mission and that he was happy with the work I had done. So for you missionaries who have to return early right now because of coronavirus, um, if that's a good thing to do, is kneel down and pray and ask Kelly Father if your mission was acceptable uh, to him. And he will let you know. He loves you very much and he's grateful for what you've been able to do, whether it's two months or 20. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and add it in our trees now. And we're going to kind of put them kind of in the picture and kind of create later layers. And they're going to stick out a lot at first, but as we add leaves, they'll kind of grow into the painting. So here's our first branch, and as it gets up, we want to, where the paint is thick on our brush, we want to do that near the trunk. So this is the trunk right here. And as the paint comes out of the brush, when there's hardly any paint left in the brush, that's when you do your thin branches. That way you don't get super big globby branches. Okay, and then there's a really nice twisted one over on this side. They're a lot more interesting. I live in the south and in Georgia, the um, state tree is the live oak and it has some really interesting twisted branches and they're really fun to look at. Um, I've also been to uh, Yellowstone National Park and there are lodgepole pines there that grow really super straight. So sometimes it's fun in your paintings to add variety. to add some super straight tree trunks and some really wavy ones. And as you do that, it adds variety to the painting. And also, this, this seems like elementary, and uh, of course, but when you're painting, sometimes you kind of lose track of where you're at. Tree trunks, they're bigger on the bottom than at top. So kind of do that. Up here, you can just put some little Vs and Ys into the branches, and, and suddenly this these blobs of green become a branches and trees and leaves and stuff. That's really neat how that all kind of ties together. Now I'm kind of feeling like my brush is too big, so I have a little brush so that I can do the details. And we're gonna go ahead and put some more branches in here. And just nice black ones that you start at the bottom and you always go up like that. And look at your artwork. Is it too bright? Is the white spark too big? Do you want it smaller? And be thinking about how you want it to look. Oh, there I started at the top and went down. So I got too fat at the top. So there we go. And I put that in there. And I'll add a few more over here to pull it in. Then we're gonna go back in and put some leaves on top of our, our tree trunks so that it ties them into the painting and they don't pop out so much. On this one, I did thicker trees. I think this one was too closed in. So I'm going to, I'm trying to make this bigger and more open. So you get more of the feeling of the glow as opposed to the trees. So as you do paintings, you may see things that you don't like that you want to change and fix and make different. And um, 
things like that. Now I want this ground to be feeling more like ground, so I'm gonna go ahead and make it a little bit darker with the, with the green and the grays. And pull in some nice dark blacks to make shadows. So I just did splotches up here. I'm kind of pulling my lines a little bit when I'm doing the ground. So it kind of feels like little bumps on the ground. And it's not just like leaves like the top. So you change the way you move the brush to make a different texture. All right, so I think we're about done there, right there. You can leave it like that or you can add a little teeny bit. Oh, sorry, we forgot the leaves. Let's put some more leaves on. Those leaves are fun. All right, so we're gonna make some lighter leaves. A little bit of a few lighter leaves on top of the branches. You kind of pull the tree trunks in. There we go. Kind of break them up so it's not just a straight line. Because we know the whole tree trunk's there and our mind's gonna fill it in for us. That's the neat things about brains is they, they finish the paintings for us. They know there's leaves there so they're gonna add the details and we don't have to necessarily put them all in. They're going to put them in for us. So thank you guys for doing part of the work. That helps us. All right, and now we're gonna go ahead and add a little teeny bit of yellow. See if we can get a little more yellow out of this little tube. And then we're going to put a little teeny bit of brown. The littlest teeny bit, if I can get this open. Oh my goodness, this is not close all the way. There we go. Just a teeny bit of brown and some more white. Or can you just kind of do the hint of Joseph Smith at the bottom? This is for people 